able to gather once again after a year off to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. You've been provided a booklet with two histories of Pulpit Rock, which are being provided instead of presenting a verbal history this year. It was fun to discover a 1959 photo of some of the participants in the sunrise service in the 1959, the Dallas High School yearbook, The Steelhead, which was added to the front of the history booklet and is displayed up front here, if you want to see a larger picture of that. That was about as big as I could, I could blow it up after uh, being in a yearbook for that many years. And you'll notice that everyone stood at those gatherings back then, didn't have these wonderful chairs that the Masons provide us now. We're grateful to all of those who have volunteered in any way to make this worship celebration a great experience for all of us. And we welcome our guest preacher, Lee Matthew, who began last summer as the pastor at United Church of Christ Congregational. She has quickly become an active and valued member and friend here in our community. This is the day of celebration. We sing, we pray, we play instruments, and we rejoice gladly. Yet it is too marvelous for words. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O oh, awesome God, with gladness and thanksgiving, we gather here at historic Pulpit Rock early on this Easter morning. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a symbol of your love and sign of your grace. May all that we say, hear, and do this day give honor to your name for the marvelous things you have done in Jesus Christ and in us. Amen. You're invited to take your bulletins and open them. And we will be singing some hymns together. Eternal 
singing those are good ones aren't they that's a wonderful way to worship worship through song i'm going to share first with you though um our scripture uh I, i'll take that yes i do thank you very much here's uh here's a mic stand mic over there i'll take that one, okay thank you very much uh the scripture is taken of course a uh, very recognizable place in the bible oh. There we go. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, you have to get real close. I'll get real close. Okay. I'm reading to you from Book of John, Chapter 20, beginning at verse 11. I bet you this sounds familiar. This is why we're here. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to him, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've, where they've laid him. 
when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? What are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me what you have, where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said, that, that he had said these things. May God add his blessing to this meeting of his holy word. There's two, there's two songs I always I identify with. Easter, first one is of course, Christ the Lord is risen today. And the other one is this one. And I'm sure you'll just have to join in on the verse. I'm mean on the chorus, because I'm sure you all know it. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross like the dearest and best. For a world of sinners was slain. Oh, I'll cherish the old rugged cross. All my trophies at last I lay down. I will sing to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. For a cry, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, as a wondrous attraction to me. It was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to part and sanctify me. Everyone. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till the trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. This is probably a good time to tell you I'm afraid of ladders. God is good. I'm up here. Okay. It is good to be here. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our God, our strength and our redemption. Amen. Suppose that someone you love very much has just died. 
And I know many of you know that feeling all too well. And this person was very, very special. You, you thought he was gonna change the world. But instead, he suffered an agonizing death at the hands of the state because he was deemed a threat to power and the status quo. You stood there and you saw it all and there is nothing left. In your grief, you know you have to do something. We who have cared for the body after the soul has departed know that it is a great act of love to anoint the dead. So you go early one morning to his above ground tomb to honor, to grieve, to remember, and hopefully to take one small step in healing your own broken heart. But the body isn't there. And now you're angry. You go and tell others that uh, the body's been stolen and they go back to, with you to verify it because frankly, they don't believe you. But it's true. The one who died isn't where you left him. The others leave and you stand there alone crying until a stranger appears and asks you a seemingly simple question. Who are you looking for? Well, the answer might seem obvious when you're standing in an empty tomb. You're looking for someone who is dead. Mary tells the stranger that she is looking for her teacher, her Lord, her leader, her friend. She is looking with eyes focused on the only reality she has ever known. Death is final. When evil has triumphed, there is nothing left to do but to grieve and anoint a body that will inevitably turn to dust. There is nothing else to expect. And there is no one else to look for in this lonely, godforsaken place. And then the stranger says her name, Mary. And her eyes are open to an impossible vision and the world that Mary Magdalene thought she knew is radically changed forever. And that brings us to this glorious day at this historic place in our beloved town. And the question becomes actually a very profound one for us. Who are we looking for? Are we looking at a 2000 year old story translated from an ancient language that few of us speak? Set in a far off country that few of us have been to? About a good man who died unjustly and then miraculously rose and went to heaven in a fairy tale ending of happily ever after. Is that what we're looking for? Nostalgia, sentimental hope, tradition. Have we come here on this glorious morning to anoint an entombed idea? Meister Eckhart, a medieval theologian I adore, uh, once said of Christmas, what good is it to me if this eternal birth of the divine son takes place unceasingly, but does not take place within myself? This then is the fullness of time when the son of God is begotten in us. Yes, Christ is always being born in the world. And friends, Christ also suffers the pain, lies, fear and hate of this world every single moment. And Christ always, with every breath we take, is resurrected into eternity. To paraphrase Eckhart, this then is the fullness of time when Christ is alive in us. And yet, like Jesus's followers after the crucifixion, we find that hard to believe. We fall into despair. We think evil is stronger than the good. We perceive true power as something human beings hold. We confuse safety with locked doors. 
right here, right now, the teacher stands in front of you calling your name, daring you to open the eyes of your soul and accept a radically new life. Jesus comes to us in our loss, in our grief, in our fear, and essentially says, look at me, don't be afraid. I am here now. My peace I give you always. We're gonna sing now one verse of a classic hymn that was written about Mary at the cemetery, that's the garden in the title and her encounter with the risen Christ. Sisters and brothers, may you too know with joy a living Lord who walks and talks with you and claims you as his own. Amen. I know it was short. I thought it was gonna be colder. <laughs> As the body of Christ resurrected by love and empowered by the Spirit to continue God's work in this world. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.
Not what we need, Jim. <laughs> 